Hello and welcome to Steph Time. My name is Stephanie and today I wanted to show you how I made this essential clutch. The pattern is by Top Stitch Makers and it's super easy and beginner friendly so let's just hop into it. Alrighty, to start out you're going to want to cut out your pattern pieces. This is only four pieces of paper so it's super quick to tape or glue together. And once we have that we're going to pick out our fabric. For me I wanted to do something quilted. So I went through all of my two and a half inch squares that I had cut from my scrap pile and I'm kind of trying to figure out what I want to do here. Once I kind of got the right idea, I just kind of built it out to make sure it was big enough to cut my pattern piece out of. Now don't forget about seam allowance here, I did have to go back and add some extra squares. Um, but we're going to remove our normal foot and I'm adding on this quilting foot which just helps me measure a quarter of an inch really easily. And then we're going to take our first two squares, put them right sides together, and we're going to sew without back stitching a quarter of an inch from the edge. And then we're going to take the next square that we've uh, laid out here and we're going to put it right sides together against this white square as you can see here. And then we are also going to sew that without back stitching a quarter of an inch from the edge. You can obviously use a regular foot here. The um, quilting foot is something that came with my machine and it just makes it really easy to measure quarter of an inch. You can also do these in batches assembly line style. I'm just doing one by one to show you guys. All right, that's what it's looking like and we're going to continue to do this for all of our squares until we have a bunch of vertical pieces. It's pretty repetitive, so put on your favorite TV show, audiobook, whatever to pass the time. And also, don't forget to take a little snack break. I took a cereal break here and it was delicious. All right, now we are going to press all of our seams open on all of our vertical pieces that we just sewed together. As an example, I'm showing you how to do one single one, but it really is helpful to just line them all up and do them all at once. Pressing our seams open is really important. Uh, it helps to reduce bulk as we quilt our pieces together and we want this to emulate a flat piece of fabric. So please press your seams. All right, now that we've got them all together, we need to put our vertical pieces together. So I'm laying them right sides together, making sure to line up the seams and sewing a quarter of an inch from the edge. I'm taking my time here to make sure that my seams are pressed open when I sew over them and that the seams are matching up when I sew over them. So I'm just checking, double checking here, taking my time. And we are going to do that with every single vertical piece that we have pieced together here. We are just adding it to the larger piece, making sure to line up the seams, making sure that our pattern is looking good. And yeah, we're just gonna do that until we have one large piece of fabric. And it looks great. I'm lint rolling and trimming any little threads and making sure that my pattern piece fits on top of it. And it does. You're gonna wanna do this piecing two times so we can cut two main fabric pieces for our clutch. And this is what they're looking like. They actually ended up being opposite, which I thought was a cute touch. And I'm also now cutting out some interfacing for our main pieces, as well as cutting out our lining pieces. It'll just be two of each. And then I thought, you know what this needs? I need somewhere to put my phone. So I'm cutting out a little phone pocket here. So I'll iron the top, sew it down, and iron the sides before attaching it to my lining. I'm also going to put a little tag on it, so that's what I'm doing here. Sewing this onto the pocket before I sew the pocket onto the lining. Don't forget to check that you've sewn everything flat on the back of the main piece. We want all those seams to be open. And then I'm putting the iron-on interfacing face down onto there and pressing it until it is well applied. Now I am picking my pocket placement for my little lining, sewing that on. I kind of sewed it like you would a, a pocket on something, so I did double stitching. But it works great, my phone fits wonderfully, and it will be able to endure some good wear. All right, I've cut my zipper down to size, putting the zipper face up on the lining and basting it to the lining. So I did trim my zipper here and I made a huge mistake 
by checking the zipper and zipping it right off of there, having a bit of a panic moment. This is not the first time that I've done this. Why do I keep doing this? I had to use my seam ripper to take off the metal stopper on the other end and slide the zip back on. Totally cool, works fine. <laughs> All right, but as you saw, I placed the main fabric face down on the zipper and the lining, and I'm using a zipper foot to get as close to those zipper teeth as possible. And then I'm folding it out and top stitching it down. What this does is keeps it from getting caught in the zipper when you're zipping it. We are going to put the lining face up with the zipper face up and sandwich the main fabric on top of that. And we're gonna sew that down with a zipper foot as well. And then you got it right. We're gonna flip it out, iron it down, and top stitch it to prevent any of the fabric getting stuck in the zipper. This is me testing the zipper. Um, I had to pick a few stitches and redo some of them. But now we are ready to sew the exterior make this thing actually a little bag. So all the way around the edge with the main fabric right sides together, the lining right sides together, I'm pinning all the way around, making sure that the zipper is folded in towards the lining. And I'm gonna leave a little opening at the end and I'm gonna sew that all the way around, stopping to make sure that there's enough room to flip this inside out through that hole. Flipping it inside out, I got excited. I wanted to see what it looked like and it looked super cute. And I was like, yes, it's awesome. Check out the unzip and you can see the inside. It's super cute with my little foam pocket. I love that I included that detail. And my little tag, I was very excited in this moment. All right, but then I realized, you know what? I need some straps. So I was trying to figure out, do I wanna use a gingham or some white gauze fabric? I went for the gauze, so I went ahead and cut strips for that. I did two inch strips, and then I also cut out two inch strips of interfacing and interfaced those before putting them right sides together and sewing together and making a box at, the, at one end of the strip. Once we're done sewing this, I'm going to trim the corners of that strip and flip it inside out. I'm gonna make sure to push out those corners really nice and then we are going to iron it down. As I iron, I just try to make sure to wiggle out the edges all the way to the end of the seam before pressing, because that really helps. And then what we're going to do is do the same thing with another strip, but we are not doing a box at the end because we are just folding it in half for the D-rings. So first, we are flipping it back inside out and then I'm clipping the curves just so that they're a little bit smoother when we turn them out. I'm marking where I want the straps to go and picking my stitches in that area. Could I have done this the first time around? Yes, but I was too excited, so I'm doing it now. So I'm just pulling out all those stitches and then I'm putting the strap with the D-ring, sticking it in there and pinning it in place as well as doing the same thing for the long strap that will be the crossbody strap on the other side. I was shoving this through and then I was like, I should just pull it from the inside. So I did that, it was much faster, would recommend. All right, we're pinning that in place and then we are taking it to the machine, making sure to back stitch at the beginning and end, as well as over the strap if you want some extra security. Like on this side, I did a little bit extra. When I'm done, I'm gonna cut the excess off just to match the seam allowance. Then I'm going to flip the bag inside out and I'm going to close the hole at the bottom by just folding in the seam allowance a little bit and sewing down a straight stitch. Next, I'm gonna push the lining inside, zip everything up, close it all up, loop the strap through the D-ring and my little bag is done. And it is looking so cute if I do say so myself. I would definitely recommend making yourself one because it was super quick, super easy, and very cute. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope that you grabbed the essential clutch for yourself. If you like this video, make sure you like it. And if you wanna stick around, please do. I love having you here. Bye.